was our idea to do a, 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 a 24 page story like that and just do it in 24 hours. Um, and then it became, uh, after we finished it, the, the outline of it, uh, it became a bigger project. We got a lot of people involved to, to donate um, bonus pages um, and uh, did a fundraiser for it. And it just became this much larger project. And now we're sending out copies for free to, to schools and youth organizations and churches and, uh, and individual educators around the country. Uh, and all around the world, actually, we're sending all the copies to Germany and Amsterdam, and you know, um, and, and uh, out one, the Out Magazine people emailed us and said you're going to be two of our Out 100 for the year because of this work that you're doing. And it, when you're when you're recognized for something that you thought you just had to do, it's kind of surprising. Um, like I wasn't, uh, we had no idea that this would be any kind of. A, it wasn't a business decision. It was. It's like we're not making any money at this at all. Uh, like we raised money to handle some of the printing costs, and the rest of it just got paid. It was like there's no. There was never any question, you know. Um, but it, it definitely felt like a, there was a responsibility because we know better. Like we know better than the people who are saying it's not a big deal that these kids are being fed these horrible messages about themselves um, because they don't see the aftermath or they don't pay attention to it. They, they, they brush under the rug. They say, oh, it couldn't possibly be because they're gay because they're only 12 years old or 13 years old. And, um, it just it became impossible to ignore it and people decided not to ignore it anymore and say, I don't care if you're going to say that um, you know, we're talking to your children and we're going to corrupt your children and all these things. Like, well, that's too fucking bad because um, we want your kids to be alive. You can hate us all you want, but your kids are going to be alive. Um, so, you know, I think that we, um, I think we all probably feel somewhat of a responsibility to, to speak up, particularly on that. So. Um, two things. As a writer and having a captive audience, I always felt like it was my responsibility to kind of um, to, to broaden people's opinions and, and ideas about the world and and not just stick to the one thing people are coming to you for. You know, particularly I, I, I write an adult blog and I was always very hell-bent on not just making it purely about the sex. So um, that was my first thing. That was my first uh, motive was just all kinds of topics and making sure people saw me and understood that I live myself I lived my life in a way that I wanted people to kind of see something of and maybe use that as an example for themselves. You know, get out there, be involved with certain kinds of movements, talk about things, make sure that you know, you're not just hiding in your bubble because it's safe, because it's the only way that you can really get by. So that's number one. Number two, as an early adult star, I made some really poor choices as a very young person, and I did some unprotected work. And I made it made a decision when I started producing my work, my own work, that I wasn't going to continue doing that because I knew that that kind of message through my actions was potentially putting people at harm, giving them the wrong idea about how they should conduct themselves. So I started producing my work safe, but then I also got on board with a company with an organization called DCBucket.org. And I don't know if you know this, but Washington, D.C. is one of the hardest hit areas for infection. And if I felt that it was important, considering my background and my, my um, highly visible nature as, as an adult star, to get out there and say, hey, here are some facts, and wake up, protect yourself. So um, that was one thing through my life. Style, and that was one thing that I could do on my level to make sure that I was setting a good example, even though I kind of made some poor choices as a very young person. Sean, if you wanted to be kind of a superhero and show people, especially young people who have done erotic work, that it's not, it's nothing to be ashamed of, and that you can have a full life and career. <laughs> you know what? I am. Um, I still feel like I'm the worst person to be a role model. I never set out to be a role model. I don't think that adult stars should be looked up to that way. I just don't think it's right. But if it's going to happen, adult stars should live themselves, live their, conduct themselves in a way, and live their life in a way that if people are looking up to them, 
that they're not getting the wrong message. And one thing I do want people to know if they decide they're gonna head out there and do, do adult, I want them to know that you can't just lay back on your haunches, or worse, and, um, and, and just expect everything to ride. I think you should really get out there, be proactive, talk, open your mouth, have an opinion, and actually be a well-rounded person with all kinds of dimensions. Because if you aren't, all you are is just the sex, and you're only gonna be seen for just the sex. So anytime I bring anyone in to work with me, or anyone, anyone, anytime anyone comes to me and they ask me about you know, becoming an adult star, I say, hey, do it all you want, but know that you're only gonna be doing yourself justice if you come into it with an understanding that you're not just this one thing. You're all kinds of things. You make it about the one thing and you're gonna fail and people are only gonna see for the one thing. Sean, you were a you were a fighter at eighteen when I met you. And what I what I what I find interesting and part of what this panel's about, and even if you just think about Spider Man for a second, you know, the He's 14, 15, 16, depending upon the era that, that the story is set. And he's a fighter, and he steps up, and he learns very quickly with the death of his uncle that if you just sit back and do nothing, the world does not get to be a better place. That actually, it can actually become a worse place because, you know, your families can die. And here you have a 14, 15, 16-year-old who steps up to fight. Sean, I, as, long as, I, as long as I've known him, he's been very adamant about what he wants and what he thinks is right and I somehow think that part of this it gets better we have to make it better is you really do have to stand up and I know it's not easy for every kid to do that but we have to in some way shape or form tell people that you can't just sit back and wait for it to magically happen you are important you have value you have just as much value as anybody else and make it happen or at least don't go backwards. You you deserve to be there just as much as everybody else. How about you, Sean? Z? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and how, how does your work speak to that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm teasing. I, I totally agree with that. I'm. Gosh, I, I my whole life, to some degree or another, has been an example of that. Um, Thankfully, I'm, I'm, I'm older, old enough to know better uh, and not take myself too seriously anymore. Um, but as far as where my, my work is concerned, uh, uh, with the myth story, uh, it delves into storytelling within the sci-fi fantasy genre, but I also include sexuality, uh, sex and sexuality, excuse me. Um, uh, but pansexuality, I actually don't limit it to just gay or just straight, there's bi, there's trans, there's everything. I don't, I believe passion is passion is passion. And if I can show and tell a story in a setting that's not just entertaining, but include it, include the affection and let it show up in a way that's very sex positive. For me, I feel like I'm doing something right because I think we are in this world where everyone needs to fit into a box. And I think the boxes are unnecessary. I think you just need to be you and celebrate all of who you are. We're not just that one aspect that people want to make us out to be. A lot of people equate being queer or gay or, or some form they associate it with just sex. And so for me, I want to tell a story that has the exact same stories as you find in the mainstream element uh, and has that queer element and again, shows those same loving, lustful everything in the same way that you would see in a straight story, but just telling it very matter-of-factly. Yes, they're queer. Yes, they love. Yes, they lust, like we all do. Um, but again, that's not the, uh, the fill of who we are. And we're, we have pains and we have uh, epic battles on whatever level. <laughs> Probably not in the same level that I present in my story, but you guys get what I mean. It's, it's, it's all important. And, and so with myth, I have an opportunity to uh, tell those stories in a way that are just because and not make them a sensational thing or a label. Uh, and so that's my work with me. You don't have to talk. I mean, you just sit here. 
What was the question? We were talking about how, um, you know, back to the Spider-Man notion that you brought up about how, with you know, with great power comes great responsibility. With great queerness, does responsibility come also? And how do you integrate that into your work? I mean, how are you making things better through your work? <laughs> or is that even your responsibility? I don't. I don't know. Um, I think. I don't know, I, I don't think I, like, I like, like what Sean... Okay, PK, once, uh, I know PK. All right, PK, when did you finally decide to start doing your books? How long did it take for us to tell you and to beat it into your head that you actually had a lot of, you had a lot of good stuff to say, a lot of good stuff? No, my, my hesitance is, I don't, I'm, I'm not approaching any of the stories, um... At, with any kind of an agenda, like that it, that it should present a certain viewpoint of queer characters um, in, in one way or not. Or, uh, however, the story that is being told is focusing on, on a queer character who grows up in an accepting family. He has an open relationship with his boyfriend that is not derided. But it's it's not. It wasn't really a political like statement. It was just like you know, like you know, someone writes a, a straight romance story and they don't think, oh, we've got to present uh, Matthew McConaughey and Sarah Jessica Parker in a certain way. Like there, there's no like, and I sh so I don't know. I, I shouldn't have to put like a, an agenda behind how I present the characters. So I, I think if you're being honest, but I think you're not answering my question. But I think that being, I think that being honest, uh, being really, really honest about gay lives, um, is not always the easiest thing to do. And I think we've all experienced um, people telling us that we might be putting ourselves into a niche market or limiting our options just because we're focusing on queer material, um, even if we don't feel like we're focusing on it. Other people feel like that, and I think that um, being honest and being and knowing that the story you're telling is the right story, that, it's it's not a political thing, but it, but it kind of is. It's kind of, it's something, it's taking a stand in a way, even if you feel like you, it, it actually might be the perfect uh, explanation of the power of responsibility thing. You just feel like it's the only thing to do, you know? Because you have these stories and you have this truth. It's the only thing to do to tell it. It's like being right for being who you are. And like, just, and, simple as that. I, 